their ADC to represent them next. Okay, the Hyper Carry King, and facing across from him is the Faker of Japan. It is Saros. This is the explosive matchup. If there is any player from Latin America South that can go toe to toe mechanically with Saros, it's certainly going to be Wara, especially after this tournament. Yeah, we saw them play against each other in Assassin mode. They just opted two of the strongest players on this team, and they're going to need him. If Japan can put this one away, Saros is the guy to do it, but Wara. He has defied death many a time. And I'm curious to see what he picks up. He's the Zillion King. Yes, exactly. Yeah, got it. Yeah, he could take Zillion too, but I don't think so. No, I actually it's Saros. Well. Like, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, it is Saros. He's played Nocturne, Velkaz. Wara definitely not, but uh, he was a mid laner, so maybe back in the day. But That's yeah. what's cool about War is that since he's roll swapped from mid into AD carry, there's kind of like that sneaky aspect of Will he play a mage? Will he play an AD carry? He's certainly showcased his mechanics on the likes of the Ezreal and the Vayne already, so it needs to be respected in that front. But this is kind of big question marks for both these players. What is Saras going to play? This guy is, uh, is known for his innovation back home. Yeah, I think this is going to be a really, really curious pick, man, because if there's ever two players that are going to take something a little bit outside of what you would expect in the 1v1, outside of traditional stuff, it's got to be this. Here we go, though. Will it be similar bans? Will we see uh, heavy farmers continue to be taken off the board? I feel like we keep seeing them target people out, like Caitlyn, like Nasus, and then they come in with the Talias, and it's like, okay, they're going to farm anyway. They just want to eliminate some of the competition, and then we end up at a level 4 duel. We're like, okay, why not? Cassiopeia stops. Uh, it seems like everyone kind of changes their direction midway. That's how it's gone. But now down to the last couple seconds, Saros is taking his time on the ban. I was going to say, is he just going to keep doing that and not ban anything? But no, he takes the Caitlyn. That is Away. a legitimate strategy. Although, again, Caitlyn and Nasus. We'll see if this continues to be the meta of 1v1s. If uh, Turkey versus Southeast Asia get to this point. Yeah, well, it's all on the line here. This is no pressure, the match Wara. point. Not at all. If Wara can't win this one, his team is out. But can you believe it after the crazy 5v5, after the Assassin's mode, it's all going to come down to the individual skill of these two players. And they're the best. When it comes down to it, LeBlanc ban, Draven ban by Saros. He's not going to let Wara take an AD carry like that. Yeah, so definitely thinning the AD carry pool out. But again, Wara roll swapped from the mid lane. Has shown that he can play the LeBlanc from the assassin mode. Unfortunately, didn't win his team anything. And he won't be playing it this time around, but it was a nice ban there. Uh, Saros finally finished off with a Syndra. And quickly, Wara looks at the Lucian. I don't think he'll lock that one in, but we could see it. That's very ballsy. Uh, Lucian can farm it out. He can oh look God. for the duels. You can see the Japan have been happen. talking, and they've just they've strategized. Yeah, it's even like even better in sync if he takes like the same skin, the Star Guardian. Is that what more annoying? Skin was used. That was the one. Okay, so we could have a, another repeat of the last time around. Yeah, we do have the Lucian lock in. Going so, to the comfort. Wara is definitely you know he's gone for the comfort level, and he's felt like he can deal with it with a barrier, but. Saros has not locked this Lulu in yet. I think he will. Uh, Barrier is going to be better on the 1v1, especially when you're dealing across from uh, Ignite. So no surprise to see those two summers. Yeah, you don't want the heal. It's not worth it. Exactly. Especially with the shred that you're going to get from the Ignite. Uh, especially on an AD carry champion. Again, the cool thing about kind of Lucian and Lulu is their flexibility and kind of what technique that they want to try to win the game through. You know, is it going to be pushing the tower? Is it going to be through the 100 CS? Or is it going to be through a, a straight 1v1 duel? Well, Saros has locked the Lulu, so if it ain't broke, don't fix it, he says, as he locks that champion, and Wara is going to be facing off against him on this Lucian. So this will be really curious. I think Lucian definitely has a bit more punishability. I mean, if, if Lulu, her primary damage source is through a skill shot, uh, and naturally, if he uses his Relentless Pursuit, it's really just about, like, the abilities and how they match up. Te yep. Technically... Who pushes the buttons better? Well, Lulu, or excuse me, Lucian at level 3 is going to have one of the highest damage outputs if he weaves his passive correctly mm -hmm. enough times, but I don't know. Are we just simply going to be trading through Qs or I mean, creeps? he could just be farming it up, too, because that's another thing when you think about. The double tap can let him farm a little bit faster and shove the wave and try to make that play. Uh, I'd be curious. Well, naturally, you're always going to want to grab control of the wave, so that way when you do look for those little trades, you get the advantage of having more creeps follow up your attacks. You yeah, know what I mean? that's true. You can start shoving that one in. So that will, for that will always be a priority, unless we get into a case where uh, we get control of Bush, we bully someone off of the initial wave that's set, and then you try to get behind the enemy caster creeps and zone them in between the time that the next wave is coming in. Yeah. Well, let's see who gets the jump on who is the 1v1s. Continue all on the line here for Latin America South. They need this victory to stay alive. Wara on to Snowdown Showdown, marching his way down the mid, and he'll meet up with Saros. And let's this, get ready. this is it.
This is do or die for Latin America South. It is all on the shoulders of Wara. The guy who wasn't even initially voted into this tournament, who has come through and showcased that he deserves to be here. Uh, he has been massive in this tournament right now. And like on all variety of champions, we've seen him de pretty solid in the Sasmo. We've seen him great in the 5v5s. And now he's on Lucian, a champion that's, you know, in every AD carry's wheelhouse. May not have been meta for a little while, but Saros is going to have to watch his back. But he feels confident enough to take this Lulu. And they are not going to be meeting each other. Just some brush control for Wara. Makes sense. You don't want to uh, risk your region's life simply by face checking level one into a bush, having things go sideways. Yep. Oh, ooh, oh, I had the minion too. Both though. of them. They are playing very scared in this one. Come on. Let's see some action. Wara, I think the level three is really going to be super crucial for him, like you were saying, as he does get a few pot shots with the piercing light, but the Thunderlords is punishing him. And taking targetable damage uh, as opposed to trying to do with the Glitter Lance. You can see the players on the bottom of your screen. Japan looking a bit more cheerful. Although Hellier's like kicked back like, <laughs> eh, yeah. Yeah, he's finished. He's done as, he's done as much as he possibly can. Saros. He has to wait until the shield drops. There's the Relentless Pursuit. He gets the exhaust. There's one following. He's got Biscuit three caster creeps. Nommed. There are a lot of caster creeps there, that's for sure. And the ones for Saros were a little bit preoccupied. Oh, the barrier and the ignite. He's going to have to dash away. The minions were punishing him. And Saros comes out on top of that trade. Oh, no. Run. Yeah, he's just going to have to go back very close right there. The issue was is that War chose to fight Saros within, I think, oh! three of Saros' oh, caster creeps. And it was really the minion damage this low level that almost spelled disaster for Latin America South. You can see him going for a much more sustainful build right now. Well, Saros he has to. He can't off. afford anything no, else. No other money. I mean, this is awful back right now because you just do not want to leave that early on. Saros is going to be able to take a health relic if he wants it or just save it. He denies the minions. He can freeze the wave. Oh, this is looking so good for the LJL. He's just trying to hold it there as long as possible. The biggest thing that he missed out on, though, is always going to be that experience. It's not going to be as punishing across from a Lulu as, say, another champion, simply because her ultimate really doesn't do damage, uh, but still not the greatest situation to be in. Yeah, now he's going to equalize up to three, but he's still a little bit behind the eight ball, and he's trying to clear away these mini waves so he can get the fight on. Unfortunately, gets nailed by the Glitter Lance, and he dashes, but Saros is already getting healthier enough again. Piercing Light, double tap again. Saros is going to be the one forced back under tower now. Got no more biscuits. Now, what Wara needs to do is he needs to actually keep Saros in the lane as long as possible, or if Saros tries to make his back here. Mm, he's using his Relentless Pursuit back, but Saros cancels his own. So he's gone for pushing the wave, and he forced Saros' attention. Who's still a little bit low, waiting for the cooldown on his E to go back in again. It's because he's immediately shoving it in. So he was threatening Saros, even though he didn't hit him with anything to stop his back. He's threatening him by forcing the wave, and he doesn't want to fall too far behind in CS. He wants to make sure that he maintains that lead no matter however slim. And again, the reason why is that he has the initial back. Uh, the big thing obviously being the pot. Yep. So Saras is actually going to try to uh, minimize the damage by attempting to back on the cannon creep. But War just showcasing how strong oh. Lucian is oh. at shoving that wave in with double tap. Yeah, but Saros has just gone straight through the mini wave to dish a little bit of extra damage onto Wara, who's not able to all in him now. I'd be irritated as well. Let me back. <laughs> Gets a little cranky when he can't get backed off. So. Still very close in the farm game right now as Saros has had the wave shoved into him. Wara oh. stopping to back him. So oh, no, he doesn't. Never mind. Got He's juked. Missed all three of those creeps. Yeah, that's a little unlucky. Little unlucky. Just a bit. I can make or break his region. <laughs> yeah. Wara is not missing any himself right now. He might miss that one in the back. Unfortunately, he does get hit by the Glitter Lance. And now level five versus level five. That six could be a big difference for Wara. But Saros is not backed yet. And here we go. It's to level five. He's going in. Dash. Oh, he gets turned into a munchkin. Squirrel, I should say. Key thing right now is to look at the summoner spells. The fact that War's barrier is just about to come up. Meanwhile, and if he gets six here. We're going to have the second rotation of Saros' spells. Oh, he stops the back. And he's so low right now. He's not under a ton of threat. Uh, War doesn't have much mana. Yeah, and, and he so doesn't have six yet. Even if he does get six, I mean, it's hard because I can't click on his mana pool. He might not be able to cast it. Yeah. He can keep Saros under pressure, though. And he's actually just tanking these minions right now. Because he wants to interrupt Saros' back. He's threatening with the creeps. You know, if you back, you will lose this wave. Yeah, play this as safely as possible. Remember, the whole tournament is on the line right now. So there's in the, the hands of these two players. The level six advantage. And again, on pretty much any other champion, this is kind of your, your, your go-to to all in. Uh, 
but the fact that Wara has had contr complete control over the creep wave by always having more minions than Saros, he pretty much negated any experience disadvantage that he was at. And a clutch uh, grab of the health relic. Now Saros is still trying to back, but Wara just keeps doing this, and he's even able to interrupt it. Saros was going to move anyways, but he takes the damage. And what initially looked like a poor back for Wara has now turned into his favor just because he was able to deny Saros. But he says, this is fine. I've got, you know, a three CS lead probably. Well, another health relic too. Saros is just scraping by. Now, ah, he go. has kept up in farm. And this time he's going to try to back. I'm curious to see if Wara just... No, he takes a tower shot off that too. He was trying to get an interrupt and he does. He's got the, the Reju yeah. lead. Oh, okay. Saros ults. He's yeah, trying to scare back. him off, yeah. But now there's not available, so that's gonna be the calling! Saros dodges and ducks and dives out of some of it. Wara has no more mana left, but now it's tower threat. Hmm. Okay. Level advantage for Saros. He's got the mana pool to work with, too. Wara's gotta get back to the safety of his minions. So finally, the wave has been reset. It's been pretty much at Saros' front door for the last four waves. Yeah. Mana pools are a thing. Wara takes a little bit more damage, and the health relic comes back up. The one on Wara's side is going to take a lot longer, as he only just recently picked it up. Okay, piercing light and double auto, but he still gets nailed by at least a little bit of damage. Help picks. Thunderlord's proc. Oh, Wara's playing with fire here. He's got uh, barrier. Wara did manage to trade successfully on creeps, however. He's now going to be two above Saros, simply because Saros missed... Technically, he missed three creeps when he went to trade with Wara, but Wara also missed one when he was trying to get back to the wave. Yep. Missed another one there. Wara is going to be able to back, and of course, Saros had already backed for the first time. This game gets a Seeker's Arm Guard, another Doran's Ring, and an Amped Tome, as well as some Biscuits. We'll have to see what Wara is going to pick up as the mini wave comes crashing in. Saros nails one. Should be able to clean this one up. And Ooh. still, just a very slow pace game. Yeah. Now, both of them going defensive item tells me that they're looking for small skirmishes, but particularly over farm. They're not looking for all-in engagements unless it's gifted to them. It's about continually chipping away and using pressure advantages to, you know, get one CS, two CS. I think we're in this one for the long haul. I think we are for sure. It's it's so close. Two creeps separating the two players right now as War is going to be able to dash and get a little bit more damage. He gets turned into a squirrel, but he keeps on Saros. There's a big minion wave, however, and Thunderlords is going to deter him. Dashes. Oh, he wants to punish the health relic. He does get it, but he takes a lot of damage in return. Oh, it's tense. One trade going awry could mean the difference right now. One You're talking about the trades. Going I'm awry. just looking at the creeps. I'm like, oh no, he missed another one. Oh, yep, and he's tanking through everything right now. He's got the cannon creep on him as well as the caster creep. Yep, he dashes straight in. That's going to force the ultimate out of Saros, and that is a very, very useful summoner spell. His barrier saving his life. Oh no. As Saros now is on the chase, realizes there is no health left, and he whimsies forward, and he's able to steal away the health relic. Wara is forced back. Six creep advantage, but that's not going to last long. But there was no reason to take the trade like that. Wara, unfortunately, makes a mechanical error. He was standing right next to the brush. He took way too much uh, minion damage. All he needed to do was step into the brush and drop sight, or choose not to fight right next to the cannon creep. Yeah, and just like that, Saros is able to free back. It's 76 to 76 creeps. But We're within 24. You just have to think, you know, how, how draining it is to focus and to say, okay, I'm going to farm this one out to 100, that I'm going to look at the uh, the, the long-term game and try to stay focused on that, how frustrating it is for a player. You know, they want to trade. They want to be aggressive. Look at this from Saros. Five, count them, five biscuits. We're not backing again. No, 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 no. Health Relic steals away. They want to stop any sustain possible, and War is trying his damnedest to freeze this one out. It's going to be difficult, though. He has four CS advantage, but the waves keep on coming. Forces a little damage from Saros, dashes forward, gets a piercing light. Double tap to finish the minions off. He gets a few more. Oh, this is coming right down to the wire. Right now, Wara has the advantage. Saros seems to have misplayed this one, but the Thunderlord's proc is there. There's a lot of minions, though, pushing forward. And Wara does a nice job to sidestep the Glitter Lance. He is within 12 minions. Saros gets the shield. Auto attack still flying. Double taps onto them. Wara still afloat here. No summoner spells for him, though. On if he gets either side. On, on either side. It could be deadly. If it really came down to kills after all that, that'd be insane. It's the windows, though. Anytime... Oh. There we go. 
Ooh, buddy. Anytime oh, oh, oh. Seros opens up with his Glitter Lance and he misses it, War has the confidence to go in to look for the CS and to look for an elongated trade. But the problem is, is that Wara did not come back with any pots. He's entirely reliant on his uh, health relic as well as the regen pen, while Seros has now burned through all five of his pots. Wara takes a lot of damage. He's going to go He's for the gonna... coin. Oh, no! he gets interrupted. No! Dashing, looking. He needs three, but he can't get it. And that's it. Japan advance. That is heartbreaking, but amazing from Saros. Oh. Wow. Three creeps to stay alive. And okay. in the end, he gets the kill. GG, well played, Japan. But look at this methodical, synergized, well